It's time for this week's Uplift. Three ordinary guys that want you to find the freedom that is available by knowing our Lord Jesus Christ. So sit back and enjoy Uplift, brought to you by the Fulcrum Center. Visit our site at thefulcrumcenter.org. Well, hey guys, something's not right. Uh, yeah, a little odd. Yeah, this is kind of weird. I feel like I'm on ESPN. You know how they stand around and they talk and they just look really awkward, but they're standing and not sitting, you know. And I Yes, just... diagramming football plays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you don't look awkward. I all. don't? No. I feel awkward. See, you feel like you really fit in right yeah. here. You need a teleprompter, <laughs> Phil. Yeah. You need, that's what they have. Yeah, to, you know, like right. John, John Madden always had a teleprompter, but Phil could do it with a Bible. Like he could open up like the, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he could open up one of the books that Paul about Paul and he'd be circling words. And... <laughs> yeah. Diagramming. Boom. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and then he jumps over to Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm Phil awesome. Bliss. I'm Ian Thornton. And I'm Chad McLeish. And we are not where we normally are no. because we had a hardware failure. <laughs> um, our computer power supply went bad, so we had to improvise because this is our night to record. And Yeah, and the show will go on. It will. Yeah. And we've decided that it's just anything goes tonight. Yeah, yeah pretty much. It kind of started that way, right? So yeah. why not keep it rolling? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, what's the anything we're going to talk about? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> well, you know, I, um, I do want to bring up something that I came across this today. I heard this a long time ago, and I came across it again today. And someone says that Numbers chapter 5, verses 11 through 31, shows that God approves of abortion. And I'm like, let me read that again. So I go in and I read it, and I'm like, I don't see anything in here. Well, first of all, the word abortion's not in there. Then I said, okay, why would they say this? And I'm looking, I'm looking, and I'm in the NASB. Okay. Okay. And I can't find anything. And I'm actually, it, God's telling me what this really means. And it's a really good thing for women. And I'm like, where are they getting this abortion? And then I look in the parallel Bible. You know, King James, New International, New Living Translation, NASB all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in the NIV, it uses the word miscarry. So if you don't know what it is, Numbers chapter 5, if a man decided that he was jealous of his wife, that he thought maybe she slept with somebody else, he'd take her to the priest, they would take her to the temple, and they would take some dust off the floor and mix it with um, part of the offering, which was basically, I think, water. Mm -hmm. And they would mix up this concoction. And, and the person actually said, see, they even give you the recipe for abortion. I'm like, okay, so I'm reading it. And, and then what it is, is you take this oath that if you have cheated on your husband, your abdomen will swell and your thigh will swell and you'll be cursed and you won't be able to have children. Okay. But if you didn't, then nothing will happen. And so the Lord reveals to me, he goes, this is a good thing. Men were trying to get rid of their wives. And this was a test to show, look, she was faithful because nothing's going to happen. But in that case where it, some, that she was unfaithful, God would make it happen. Mm -hmm. He would yeah. supernaturally swell up her abdomen, and that's how you would know. Yeah. But I would be willing to bet that almost 100% of the time, nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. right. But anyway... In the NIV, it says, your abdomen will swell and you'll miscarry. So they think that means that that's an abortion because you're aborting the baby. It says nothing about any babies anywhere in there. Mm -hmm. So it's just another way that people take the Bible and they use it for their own benefit, for their own desires, for their own belief system, their own worldview. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To back up their own thinking. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. And it just, you can't do that. <laughs> and it shows the ignorance of some people when it comes to the Bible. And the only way, here's the thing that God gave me as I was driving down here. Traffic was heavy, super heavy. And my first thought was, I can't believe there's not more accidents because there was cars going this way and this way. And, you know, the 70, 470 split, there's a guy going across to get on 70. Big truck is trying to get with his buddy and get behind his buddy. And I'm, I thought, God, why aren't there more accidents? You know what he said? You obey the law. Like, oh, we teach people how to drive. We make them obey the laws. 
and there's fewer accidents yeah. if they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If people would read the Bible and know what's going on, right. mm -hmm. there'd be fewer worldviews that say God is proofs of abortion, because that's clearly not correct. Yeah. yeah. But somebody yeah. came up with that, probably took the NIV and, and said, ah, oh, here. And they put it out on the internet and everybody latched onto it because, oh, we got to find something. We got, abortion's got to be okay. We got to find something. And they latch onto it and they just spread it like wildfire mm. without reading the Bible for themselves. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, people who say that the Bible contradicts itself, they just need to seek the Lord more. You yeah. know, because it doesn't. No, it doesn't. On the surface, it might. You, people could make the argument that it does, but if you got to understand the full context of what's being said, and we got to seek God because God will show us and walk us through from the Old Testament to the New that it doesn't contradict itself at all. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I've heard that argument a lot. And even when I was younger, I admit I believed that. That I was like, well, it says this here, but it says that there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's being kind of superficial. Mm -hmm. When you really study and ask God to reveal to you what the, is said in there, it makes total sense. Absolutely. And you know, the thing too is the the culture in that day, we have to understand the culture that, that was taking place in those situations. And then we can ask God, okay, God, this said this, what was taking place in that culture at that moment? But his word and what God's right. intent didn't change. Right. Culture changed. But what, you know, yes. yes. And so guess what? That was yes. 2,000, whatever, 2,500 years ago. You know, we're talking Old Testament. Now look, mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. is constantly changing. Yeah, right. But God's word doesn't. But you got to seek him to find the truth. Exactly. Yeah. As, as you were talking, you know, and, you, and you had mentioned context, yeah. which is super important. Right. Because, you know, my kids, if they were to pull sound bites of things that I said, mm -hmm. they would torch me. Yeah. Right. Right. Because they're just getting true. bits and pieces. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? You know, my, my dad's lost his mind and here's why. Mm -hmm. And because he yeah. said this in this situation and then two weeks later he said this and then this. But they're all just sound bites mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. who I am. And a lot of times that's what people do is they'll grab sound bites mm -hmm. of God speaking out of context, mm -hmm. out of historical context, right. and, and all those different things. And all of a sudden they're just like, well, it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just reading something the other day. I, it was First Timothy, Second Timothy. I can't remember the exact verse now. But I read it, and I read it again, and I read it a third time, and I realized all these years I thought it meant something but when you read it in the context, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and suddenly the he, that he did this or he or they, whatever it was, I can't remember now, when you pull it out of context, it means one thing. But when you put it back into, okay, the, you were talking about these people up here, and now he, and like, oh, that's these people back here. Mm -hmm. Now in context, it means something completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got to be very careful mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, you really do. And it, you know, it's it's something that you dedicate yourself to reading and understanding. It's not just finding okay, well I feel this way today, so I'm going to find something that makes it, you know, I like, I'm going to work look up this one word and I'm going to look at all these different places where it is in the Bible and go, okay, well that's what works for me. <laughs> yeah. It, no, you know, it's like what is the Bible saying? in the totality of it. And you've brought this up a couple times, Phil, and I love it. And you said, you know, when you get your Bible, you rip, you rip out the pages between the Old Testament yeah. and the New yeah, Testament. Absolutely. Because it's the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right. You yep. know, and it is. And, it, and we've talked about There's this There's no division. Too. It, mm -hmm. No, there isn't. And, and that same crimson thread that we've talked about this too, you know, they, that starts in Genesis of who Jesus is, runs all the way through Revelation. Yeah. And it's that consistency that we need to approach the Bible with and go and look, this all works together and we're just going to read through and we're going to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And not pick it apart and go, oh, well, well this flavor is good today. What about yeah. this flavor tomorrow? Yeah. Well, and part of it is knowing who God is. You can't, he's the one who gave us this and he is never changing. He has existed forever. He's yeah. never not existed. Okay. So when you take yourself out of the equation and you say, this is about God. It really changes everything because when I'm putting myself into that, I'm going to find what I want. Mm -hmm. But when I put God into that, I find God yes. in that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, which that's is the really point. important. Yeah, right. exactly. Which is the point. But yeah. people don't understand that sometimes. It, and we have to take off those rose-colored glasses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, because we look at things through our own filters, you know, like we sometimes we approach, and, and I used to do this all the time. I would be selfish when I was reading the Bible, and I'd want to read it my way. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for what I want to hear. <laughs> I did that too. In this book. And it's yeah. like, okay, oh, yeah, he said it right there. There it is. <laughs> That's that thing I want. Got it. And it wasn't, it wasn't in full context. Mm. But, you know, the other thing, too, is, okay, there was an old covenant and a new covenant. And, you know, that's the thing. God didn't really change, but, you know, it's just the way that that we interact with him. So uh, when Jesus came on scene, it kind of changed the whole dynamic, okay? You know, and and we have the resurrection power. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the benefit of so much that the people in the Old Testament are under the Old Covenant, mm. they they didn't have like we do. So we are so blessed in so many ways with the way that God interacts with us today than the way that, that you know, I mean, we don't have to worry about a burning bush. You know, we got the Holy Spirit <laughs> in us. And that's right. an important thing that confuses a lot of people, you know, because you could read the Old Testament and say, well, you know, what's this burning bush and, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff. And it's like, well, we have the Holy Spirit in us. If we're if we have accepted Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Game changer. Same God, but the way that he interacts with us, that changed when Jesus came on scene. Mm-hmm. So and a lot of That's people exciting. And, and a lot of people are confused by that. Oh yeah. You know? Sure. Yeah, and it, it, they get stuck in that old, co- old covenant mindset. Mm-hmm. Tripping myself here <laughs> with the wire. Um, they get stuck in that that especially that whole, um, I have to perform, I have to be at this level. And Jesus took care of all that. And he goes, it's a level playing field now. Come to me. I don't care who you are, what your name is, how old you are. Come to me. You get the same thing that everybody else gets. And he's told us that with that one parable of the workers in the vineyard. That's right. Yeah. That no matter who came in the morning or came in the at eleven o'clock, they still got the same wages. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a level playing field. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit that He gave to us. But we got to get past that old covenant mindset of, well, God's mad at me. God isn't going to use me because I'm not quite there yet. No, right. that's not the case. Right. Yeah, I just read about Balaam and his donkey. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, <laughs> the Lord's exactly. your attention. He may have a donkey talk to you. Yeah. Right. But it's the point is just, you know, he will use whatever it is that he wants to use for his purposes. And we get to be a part of that. Absolutely. Right? You know, yeah. and so the 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 further we submit, um, the further we surrender the more we're opening ourselves up for God to use us in any situation, in any circumstance. Mm -hmm. The availability and dependability that we can offer to the Lord in our submission and surrender is priceless to Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to dominate the conversation with my topic. Do you guys have anything? Balaam and his donkey. Balaam's donkey. Right. So anything goes. Yeah, so anything goes. So I've been next. Next. <laughs> so Phil has let me borrow a book. It's oh. called Breaking the Bondage or Bondage Breaker. Bondage Breaker. Bondage Breaker. Okay. Great book. And I'm learning a lot from it. And in I think honestly, I think it would freak a lot of people out. Because I know a lot of Christians who don't want to think at all about the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I've got news for you. Anything goes. <laughs> Anything goes. <laughs> well, this is uplifting. Though. Very appropriate. I, I've got. I know a lot of Christians. I have friends who just psh, they don't want to ever think about anything as far as you know the enemy that we deal with and spiritual warfare and all that sort mm-hmm. of thing. We have. We've talked about this. You have it, whether you realize it or not. It's you know. Yeah, you could just have a bad day, but. There's also a lot of spiritual interference out there. Hmm. there. There's a lot of stuff taking place in the spiritual atmosphere. So as Christians, I mean, it's full in this book. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's just all over the place in this book, and it's talked about everywhere throughout. We have to recognize that and recognize that 
freedom. We have to seek the freedom. And we've talked about this before too. But I, the one thing that, that I've been learning from it is how does that work? Because, you know, like in both of you, I, I've seen both of you experience that freedom. And so how does that work? How does that walk? Well, this book pretty well lays it out for people, which is what I wanted to bring up. Like, I'm not plugging this guy's book. There's, you know, you know, you can learn a lot about this, but this guy breaks it down and it's like, okay, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, and it's a great one of, one of many tools mm -hmm. that you can use along with the book to walk yourself into freedom with the power of the, you know, with the Holy Spirit and right. with your, and with your faith and your belief in Jesus. And it's a great, it's a great thing. And I think that more and more people need to realize, number one, realize, hey, we have an enemy that wants to kill, destroy, yes. you know, right. mm -hmm. and, and they're coming after us, whether we want to admit it or not. We, we battle That's these true. spiritual battles, but here's how you can defeat a lot of that that you don't even know that you necessarily have in you, but you can defeat it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, mm -hmm. that's the uplifting part. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and, and even if, you know, one of these guys aren't your pastor, you know, whatever, you don't have interaction with one of these guys, talk to your pastor about it, pray about it and look into this book. It's called what bondage breaker bondage breaker by Neil Anderson, Neil Anderson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just read it with an, with, and pray about it, read about it with an open mind. Because yeah. Yeah. a lot of people walk around in bondage and don't realize it. Before I read it, I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew a lot of things, but there were, I come across these things, I'm like, oh, wow, I never thought of that. And it makes so much sense when you read it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very logical uh, and very common sense, really, mm -hmm. when you read it. And you just go through what he guides you through and changes your life. Yeah. I think one of the great things about it, Chad, you were bringing it up too, is that it's it's personal, and and you know, and, and oftentimes you know we read about this in in, in the scriptures and all, and, and most Christians when when we talk about spiritual warfare and you bring up the Bible, then they start talking about well Jesus casting out demons and, and those kind of different things too, and and all of a sudden they're like well I don't know if I can do that, well it really isn't about. Let me put it this way, we are our best testing ground. And that book does highlight so many areas in our own personal lives mm -hmm. that we realize and see and understand that, man, I'm in bondage here. Yeah. Or I have this battle, spiritual yeah. warfare battle that, that's going on in me. Yeah. Right. And then you can take the Holy Spirit that's been deposited into you and battle what's going on in you mm -hmm. and so you're your own testing ground and your own working ground to watch your faith build and grow and the power of the holy spirit be put on display because freedom does come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're all you're watching it all right here it's mm -hmm. not about though god may have you go do this but it's not about going and finding somebody else to cast demons out of right start at home right, right. start at home and that's the building of your faith that's the understanding and recognizing more fully the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Mm -hmm. And then you're doing it with you. And then you're starting to see because the Holy Spirit will open up your eyes to other people. Mm -hmm. And then it's just that yep. progression of growth and maturity and deepening your own faith. Mm -hmm. But it's great to start at home. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is great to start at home. Yeah, and back, I'm going to combine two points you both made together. So Phil's talking level playing field, mm -hmm. you know, people, you know, there, there might right. be, there might be somebody who's been a pastor for 30 years, you know, whatever, pastor, whatever, walking this walk for a long time, both of you. And then there, um, there might be somebody brand new, you know, relatively yeah. new, mm -hmm. you know, like, sure. like, could be like me. But, you know, like you said, you, you said people question, you know, wow, Jesus cast out you know, evil mm -hmm. spirits from people. I, I don't think I could ever do that. Well, it's not about what we think we can do. It's about what God wants to do through us. Yeah. But it's a level playing field. It is. Because once we uh, have the Holy Spirit in us and we believe in Jesus, we're in that level playing field. Yes. Now, some people are more, you know, experienced and more read and versed in the word and all that sort of thing. There's no question. 
But it's a level playing field, and if God wants to use somebody, He's going to use them. Yes, absolutely. You know, there was a podcast I think you'd shared with me, uh, or not a podcast, but it was like this interview that was on YouTube, and it was these young, two young pastors. Oh yeah, yeah. That v- Vlad, Vlad, Vlad Sovchek or something like that. Yeah, and there was another guy, Isaiah or Isaiah something. And they were talking about it, and they said that they were just, they were brand new. They had just accepted, you know, Jesus, and they were, but they were starting to do this. And they didn't even really know what they were doing, but they felt led to do it. And I was just like, wow, like, that's crazy that, you know, they, and they were like casting spirits out and stuff like that. And they didn't even really quite know what they were doing, but God was working in them where they were. And I, I, that was kind of mind blowing to me. But level playing field. Yeah, right. You know, right. Yes. because God was doing the work, not them. Right. Yes. So it doesn't matter what yeah. level you're at or your perceived level you're at. You're on the same playing field as everybody else who's doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've been very guilty of trying to like force myself to some kind of you know education and yeah. learning stuff and stuff. Like I've 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 pushed that rope. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. And and it's that's not the way it works. We just have to read the book. You know, be in, be in touch with the Holy Spirit, talk to God, have the relationship, and just be patient and wait for Him. Mm-hmm. And follow His lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's all we're doing is following His lead and what He wants to do. And, you know, I go back to the submission and the surrender. Mm-hmm. The, the, those things, um, you know, and being humbled before the Lord, you know, being low before Him, and just listening and trusting him, obeying, stepping out and doing what he's put on your heart to do and leaving the results and everything else up to him. Mm-hmm. It's not about how right. you, right. it's not about what you say, it's not about how you say it, it's not about how you hold your hand or how hard you hit somebody in the forehead or anything like that. <laughs> right. It's just about being obedient yeah. right. and letting him do the work because mm-hmm. that's what's happening. He's putting himself on display. We're, yeah. we're just these these platforms, which I, I've used before. But we're these platforms for him to show himself and to allow his glory to be seen so that those whom he created, loved, and sent his son to die for mm. will accept him. Yeah. And that's it. That's what the whole Bible is about, is it God is. putting himself on display. Mm-hmm. That is, that's right. Yeah. Everything about it. It's not about these names that we find, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David. It's yeah. not about them. It's about God working through them, right. and He can work through any of us mm-hmm. and put Himself on display. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. We yeah. just can't put ourselves on display, or He'll stop us. He'll pull us right back. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a good book, uh, Bondage Breaker by Neil Anderson. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend it. Yeah, and there's a lot of other ones. I mean, I'm not oh, just sure. plugging that one, but this one's pretty good because at the end it, it walks you through it. Mm-hmm. It just, it's kind of like, and, and the mind blowing thing that a lot of people don't realize, there's a lot of things that are seemingly innocent that yes. are anything but. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. I mean, you know, I mean, horoscopes and, mm-hmm. you know, all the, 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 uh, the psychics and the tarot cards and there's so many other things and it's, it's all listed right in there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, if, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I see so much that, you know, like on my Facebook thing this morning, my Facebook, feed what is that what they call it yeah. your pay your the thing that you, your your feed somebody had put something and they they said you know and they they showed like this um this thing that they were like worshiping and it was like a statue of a of an animal and it had beads and stuff and I'm like wow <laughs> But they don't realize, you know, yeah. it's a thing that they felt brought peace to them. And it's yeah. kind of like uh, Christians use this term new age, you know, the new age mm-hmm. thing and and stuff like that. And it's even like meditation, hypnosis, yoga and stuff like that and stuff like that. It's just, you know, I always never associated like yoga with like, well, Most guess what? It, yeah, it's a seemingly innocent stretching thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. And and pretty soon you learn about this stuff and it's like wow like this isn't good right. but most people don't realize and and that's difficult it's because it's like how do you make that connection well when god makes that connection for you you start to see it more often yeah okay so for example i you know i didn't know 
I knew horoscopes were bad because someone told me that years ago. Yeah. So I tried to avoid that. But there was a time I had a salt lamp in my home mm -hmm. because someone told me it calms you, it, it relieves anxiety because of the, they went through the whole process of the chemicals that are coming in, you're breathing in and I'm, okay. No, <laughs> no, if you're, if you're trying to change anything about you with, and excluding God from it, don't do that. Right. Yeah. That's, that opens the door for the demonic to come in and affect you in ways that you'll never understand. Right. And when I, I didn't read anything about a salt lamp, I just simply said, wait a minute, because God had made the, connected the dots, and I said, okay, this thing, it's got to go now. Mm -hmm. because, and it went in the dumpster right away. Because this thing, I'm looking to that instead of to God. Yeah. So once you make that connection, that initial yeah. connection, God is working in you and you're, and you're open to seeing it. Then you start saying, oh, wait a minute, you know, dangling a, a needle over a, a pregnant lady's abdomen to see if it's a boy or a girl. That's not good. That's yeah. opening the door for the enemy because that's not including God to find out if it's a boy or a girl. That's a, using something else. Yeah. So those things start to come out when you make this connection and it got, it's all God working through you, teaching you because you have opened the door to let him work in you. Yeah. Yeah. And now you can't, you start to see it. So you don't need more books at that point. Mm -hmm. You've got God working in you. And there again, you know, that goes back to Jeremiah 33, three. Yeah. Ask me and I will tell you great and mighty things you don't know. Right. And, 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 and that this has just been reverberating in my heart for the last couple of weeks. And it's all kinds of stuff. I'm like, I don't know what I want for lunch today. God does. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But just to, to get down to the nitty gritty of things to where oftentimes, because we don't know, and one of the greatest fears of mankind is the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God addresses that, that is so head true. on in his word mm -hmm. to tell us, talk to him about the unknown. Yeah. Talk to him about the unknown. But we go to all kinds of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. Pizza. <laughs> right? I mean, we, we do. We find these places of comfort. Yeah. And it can be a number of different things because something has brought us angst. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have embraced the anxiousness of, of the enemy, which is a spiritual war. Yeah. And we've embraced those things, but God is right out of the gates. He's telling us, come to me and talk to me about those things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Because I will bring you peace and not anxiety. Mm -hmm. I will bring you order and not chaos. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just it's, it's there. If you don't know, talk to him about it because right. he wants in every part of your life so that he's in every, so that your relationship with him mm -hmm. is saturated mm -hmm. with who he is. And yeah. I was just going to say, that's what it's doing is it's helping build that relationship. Right. Yeah, it's exactly and right. So if you've got a salt lamp or if you eat pizza or <laughs> we're not trying to tell you don't do these things, okay? That's right. What I'm saying is go to God with it and let yes. God be the one to say, yeah, yeah, maybe it's time to get rid of that salt lamp or, you know, maybe we, instead of pizza, let's try, you know, and broccoli. I'm not going to tell you what to eat because I probably wouldn't want to eat, <laughs> what was it? Broccoli. broccoli. <laughs> I actually like broccoli though. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, I mean, let God work Phil with you. Don't, <laughs> don't say, well, Phil, Chad, and Ian said that we have to do this. No, no. let God it's, be the one to say. That's the point. You're yeah. exactly right, Phil. Yeah. That's the point is, is to, is to, Use every opportunity to build your relationship with him. Yeah. Use every opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, you know, that takes you. So the, so the measuring stick is, are you going to God or yes. are you going to something? Yes. Okay. That's it. So that takes us to idolatry. Mm -hmm. You know, because you read this book and it says, oh, you know, they built these temp these uh, the poles, like Asher Asher poles, poles yes. or they did, they built this, uh, what, like a, some sort of calf or something. And I, I don't remember all that stuff, but they built animals and they were worshiping mm -hmm. animals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we sit and we laugh and like, who would do that? And we'd sit right. and laugh about it because I used <laughs> to do this. I'm guilty. I think who in the world's going to build a calf and worship it? Okay. Well, guess what? It, it, in today's modern world, you know what it can be? It could be anything. It could be a bottle of Diet Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. It could be a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Guilty. Shameful. And I'm not going to tell Phil <laughs> what Phil <Phil's> is. <laughs> I'll let Phil spill his own beans. But <laughs> oh, there's a number of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Computer video games. <laughs> yeah, that's one. <laughs> but. I was thinking more candy, but okay. Okay, well now <laughs> we'll go, with that. go ahead, go ahead, just spill it. See, I told you there was a list. <laughs> yeah. 
But but the idolatry, it can be, it'll sneak right up on you. Oh, right? yeah. Because, you know, like I, when I'd get nervous about something and anxious, what would I do? I would turn to that comfort food, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. And, and for me, I, I've battled my whole life with food and gluttony problems, okay? So for me, it was food. And I love food more than I love Jesus. Yeah. And it snuck up on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it does. And that's the thing that you realize is you wake up one day and it's like, man, I love this more than I love Jesus. Yeah. And whatever this is. You know? Yeah, every one of us has, honestly, you know, to, to get right down to it, every one of us has to define that. Mm -hmm. What is your it? Yeah. And, and compare it to your passion and your desire for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and if you find it out of balance, you know what? Ask for forgiveness <laughs> and move on. Yeah. 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 Ask for forgiveness and move on. Right, because you don't have to give up that thing, you know, like if, if your thing is like Snickers bars, you know, like if the, those TV commercials were like Betty White, you know, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, like you don't have to give up Snickers bars the rest of your life, but you just got to put it in its rightful place. Yes. You right. know, like, okay, that Snicker bar is not going to save me. You know, like mm -hmm. Snicker bar is not my way to salvation. It's and not going to relieve your stress. It, yes, it's not going to really fix any problems. Yeah, that's not the answer. Right. So what will? Mm -hmm. God will. Exactly. You know, so that's the important thing. Like you don't have to throw away all Snicker bars for the rest of your life, but you have to realize, okay, you got to put it all in perspective, mm -hmm. you know. And it's funny, like I, I've done that. I thought I've I've been consciously thinking about that lately. Like, man, is this thing more important than God? Okay, if if I feel like it's there, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that down a notch. Mm -hmm. and, and in that process, it's okay to ask Him to help you, right? Do that, yeah. Because it's yeah. not the performance, right? Right. It's right. Not, okay. Well, Phil, you're on your own. Good luck with the candy. <laughs> you know, it, it really isn't, and and that's admitting those things to the Lord that, okay, look, you know, God, I'm out of balance here. Yeah. Help me get into balance. Right. Lead me, instruct me. Yeah. Um, give me the strength to be obedient. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those different things, you know, it, it's ask him for help because he wants that for you. Yeah. And he wants that deeper relationship. And then when we see those successes, then our faith grows, mm -hmm. our relationship with him deepens. Mm -hmm. It's all of the positive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's going to help you in your next season, in your next day, all of those different things. Yep. It, it, you can't lose. Absolutely. I heard a cool saying the other day that I want to share with you guys. Kathy's friends, Kathy is in a, a bi big Bible study group, and one of her friends in that Bible study group said, we live in a microwave world but we serve a crockpot God. Mm. Oh, that's good. I, I was like, man, when she said that, because Kathy is like, I call her the crockpot queen. <laughs> Kathy loves to cook with the crockpot. But um, it was funny because it was we were both like, wow, that's really cool. And it makes so much sense because, you know, God loves to build things. Mm, you know, yes. now he can work. He can work just like that. Right. Yes. But God usually likes to walk you through a process and build things up in a in a process in a timely manner, and not just boom, hit it on superpower for ten seconds and nuke it. Right. Right. You know. And you know, Jesus showed that too. Mm. He said, "Don't tell people what I've done for you." Mm -hmm. Not because he didn't want people to know, is because he didn't want that, like you said, the microwave. Yeah, You know, he wanted, I'm going to do this miracle. I'm going to do this miracle. I'm going to build up. And finally, when it got to the point where he was about to be crucified, he said, have you not seen what I've done? He, you know, it kind of listed like, I did this and the, the, the lame are walking, the blind are seeing. He showed his resume, he, but it built over three and a half years. Yeah. It wasn't just, here I am today, let's do some miracles, I'm dying tomorrow. It was a buildup mm -hmm. because that buildup helped everyone come to him and know him and build that relationship with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why it's a buildup. That's why it's a crock pot and not a yeah. 10 seconds in the microwave. I yeah. love that analogy. That's yeah. good. I yeah. mean, man, I, I, I'm all more, I'm a whole lot more about pot roast and potatoes and carrots than I am ramen noodles <laughs> in the microwave. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all are. You're, yeah. It's just like, there's an appreciation yeah. for those things that take time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ramen noodles is on my list. <laughs> 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 
Oh, Phil's getting exposed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that one. <laughs> That's right. I love the way God works, though. Yeah, but you're still humble, know. you know. It, it wasn't filet mignon. <laughs> it was True. robin noodles. Right. <laughs> True. That's great. That's funny. Uh, oh, that's good stuff. Well, guys, you know, there's no clock in here. Well, we'll oh, just we'll yes, just start yes, watching, watching the watch. Uh -oh. Yeah, the yep, fancy the fancy Apple There's Watch. We are out of time. So. Of course we are. <laughs> we just get warmed up. I know. I really enjoyed this though. Yeah, yeah that was me cool. This, this me too. Format yeah. this layout. It worked out pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if we had an audience too, and wow. we could uh, you know? take questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Have in, have crowd interaction. Yeah. Well, we might have to start doing that. We might, yeah. yeah. We're afraid of people. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I know. Oh, there's a thought. Oh. Figure. Oh. Yeah. I like that. Yep. I have one last thing to say. Yeah. Don't limit God. Oh. And don't if it's, limit God. And if it's, if it's in the book, don't discount it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to do stuff. Yeah. We're going yes. to see big stuff in big ways. Yes, we and, you know, if you don't understand it, and it's in there, you don't understand it, because there's things in here I don't understand yet. And I just take it and I say, God, I don't understand this. And I know that in time, God will bring it to me and help me understand it. Absolutely. Maybe not right away, but he'll bring it to me. Mm -hmm. I yes. might have to read it again or I might hear something. And mm -hmm. He'll bring it to you. He will. He will. It's a promise. Yeah. It's a promise. And usually it involves Bible time. You can yeah. trust him. <laughs> yeah. It does often involve Bible time. <laughs> True. That's great. That's yeah, but awesome. don't limit God. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people do. Well, I just don't know. Because it goes back to what you guys said. Yeah. You know, Jesus cast out demons. And, and guess what? We can too. Yeah. yeah. If, if, you know, the church is going to get to that level because the church has not been doing what the church has been doing for right. the last right. however long. It, it, we're going to be doing it. Mm -hmm. It says it in there. And it's a promise. That's right. And we have to prepare ourselves and our relationships cast out the junk, That's get right. rid of our bondages, do all the stuff we talked about here tonight, mm -hmm. and be ready to exactly. serve. To yeah. serve. Jesus did those things to give us an example, not to show us what we can't do. Right. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, guys. It was, this was good. Yeah. yeah. Really it's been a great it. time. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. yeah. We'll see you again next yep. week. Have a great evening. Blessings. Thank you.